Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and you're very welcome to this June garden tour just after the rain. So we had really really hot weather all through May so much so that the grass had turned brown and I was beginning to fear for a lot of the plants in the border because normally I just don't water them. And then we had monsoon, yeah proper monsoon ginormous big droplets of rain that splodged down for days and days and days and at first I was like oh this is great for the garden but then there came a point in time when I thought oh gosh are we ever going to have a summer and today hey presto it stopped the rain is over the sun has come out and the garden is looking magnificent so we're going to take a look around the garden today and just have a look at what's in flower, what's looking good, what's not and all of those jobs I need to get around to now that the rain has finished. So come with me for the June Duenza garden tour. Okay, so you know the drill by now. We're just taking a bit of a pan of the side of the garden, past the arches, which are entrances to this large section of the garden, and we're going to plunge right in. But before we do, there's something I want to show you right over there. Isn't this geranium just magnificent? The way the sun is picking out the colors and just, well, making it sing. This is a gorgeous, if unusual, little geranium and I adore the silver foliage and then just the purple flowers that only come once a year. And as I always say to my son, a geranium is a plant that is never the star of a border, but the border is always better for its addition. Lots of green behind it, just a green backdrop, but it does a good job of just picking up the sunshine. And speaking of purple, do you see that clematis in there? That has got to be one of my favourite colours. And just to the right of it here, past the variegated yucca, we have the Saracenia planters that you saw me plant not very long ago. The one on the right is looking absolutely magnificent. That's the one that had the Alata hybrids from the other side of the garden. The Leucophila on the left is doing great, but it isn't as vigorous as the one on the right. And here we just have a little close-up of the pictures. I did originally have two box balls here in these positions, but they died. So now we have the Saracenia. And there's lots of orange going on. I don't know if you can pick out that daylily in the background there. And of course the acer, the yellowy orange acer tree on the right. This daylily or hemorrhocalis is called Rocket City and it's a really really good one for my part of the world, for my climate. Very reliable and probably needing a divide now at this stage. We have Penstemon just there in the background. I am such an enormous fan of Penstemon, such a great great plant. And here we have a very big clump of it. I think it's garnet but I'm not actually sure. And hooker is looking good. The anthemus just behind has lots of buds but not in flower yet. And I guess we should go into the garden. And on the right we have the pergolas that we've just walked through. Just swinging around where we get an idea of the canopy going on. Here lots of tetrapanics rex, looking super with the sun behind it, tree pe peony, that kind of thing. And then just swinging around, I think we'll go over to the long border. And for those of you who have been following the saga of my box blight, I have good news. It seems the plants have responded well to the treatment I mentioned in the last video. There was a good patch there where it was kind of touch and go and I was wondering, oh, are they ever going to rally? But now it looks like they might just get over this infection and rally. And here we have my long border. And 
you may recall that this was actually planted up completely from scratch just two autumns ago and boy has it enjoyed just being shaken up that little bit right in front of us that yellow plant there is an achillea and it is my absolute favorite and i'm going to show you why it has this absolutely amazing silver foliage now we were all entranced by the shocking yellow flowers but a plant that looks this good with this foliage when it's not in flower is definitely worthy of a place in anyone's border and this is why i love stipa tenuissima a gorgeous plant that can go in any herbaceous border it doesn't need to be a grass borders and i think a lot of people are scared of grasses sometimes but don't be afraid of stipa tenuissima it is a gorgeous gorgeous thing that never seeds about maybe it does in the most tiniest of ways and look at the fabulous sunny movement you get from it in the border my cat loves it as well she's such a devil she kind of dives in there and wrecks it a bit but uh, I think it's glorious and look behind at this ligularia that's the yellow one with the yellow spires how well it's doing after the rain. Now this is a plant that really likes moisture and often struggles in my garden. But this year it's just like, wow. And the peony on the left is just, again, spattered by the rain and going over, but that's okay. And just swinging around here to the left, we have poppies. These ones have a lovely deep red color and these are volunteers, so voluntary self-seeders in the garden. And directly up from the poppies, we have the fig tree. And can you see the figs? We are going to have lots and lots of figs this year. I'm really pleased with how this border has turned out and I think just now, just this season is when it has finally shown its true character and what it's going to look like going forward because when you're designing you have ideas but plants can always surprise and in this instance they've surprised me in a positive way. And we have a scrambling geranium and Thompson I think but this is a really really good doer and do you remember what I said about geraniums they are never the center of attention in a border but every border is the better for their addition I love color in a border and I love bright vibrant colors that sing to my heart Orange is definitely one of them. However, some of you may recall that I planted a load of stuff at the very back of this border in March this year. It was a lot of lilies and galtonia, and we can't see them. Or can we, if we look very, very hard at the back there? And yeah, <laughs> that on the left is one of my lilies coming up and on the right we have a cluster of Galtonia. So they've done well, but they haven't attained their eventual height. That'll take a few years to come in. So now we've trooped around to the back of the border just so that I can show you those bulbs a bit better. And you can see we're now behind all of those plants that we were looking at not very long ago. And we're going to have to swing down here to see the bulbs. So I just need these to grow a whole lot taller next year. And just while we're over here, I noticed how lovely the leaves are with the sun behind them. A lot of plants really do have so much going on for them. 
and back at the front of the border again I guess it's time to move on on our garden tour and this is the section as I mentioned that was newly planted but there are a couple of things I want to show you just a little bit further over here and the first is this amazing plant Lycnus coronaria which is one of my self seeders that I absolutely love so look out for a video coming soon just about this particular plant and I thought I might continue with my series my month of perennials and in this series I dealt with one garden worthy good hardy plant in each episode and I finished it kind of going into winter last year but it's time to start it again and swinging over here what is going on here you may ask can you remember what was here last time so this is the fatsia I said I wanted to get rid of but oh my goodness it's like it is planted in cement my husband has spent a lot of time trying to get this out and I think what we're going to have to do is just cut it off and leave the root in which is a terrible shame because it means I can't plant anything right there isn't this a pretty thing? It's a potentilla arc-en-ciel, I think is the name, and I just love the flowers. And the foliage just looks exactly like strawberry foliage, but it's not a strawberry plant at all. And it's just coming into flower. I think I have just a couple of flowers open now. And it has flecks of yellow in there on the backs of the flowers. Really, really pretty thing. Okay, so we're going to leave behind this arm of the long border and continue over to the other side there. And here we are. And do you see all of those very strongly vertical plants, the verbascums? So we have the white ones at the front there, and that's a perennial verbascum. And the ones on the right are the yellow ones. And I am currently waging a battle against them now it's not because I don't like them I do like them but it's because I have better and I'll show you in a minute so just panning across like this so you can see what I have in this section of the border good year for the day lilies and we finish here with this tree the Circe's forest pansy which, well, it's very susceptible to wind and it lost a big part of itself last year. And under the tree we have a couple of fancy Roscoa that I planted last year. And <laughs> nothing much to show here at the moment, but very short time ago there was one in glorious flower. And I'm showing it to you now and isn't this just the sweetest little thing you ever saw. Absolutely love this Roscoa. And of course it has finished flowering now but at least I have the clip. And these house leeks are about to flower so I'm kind of looking forward to that. It should be some fun. I wonder are they going to be yellow? So up we go and we can see a geranium. It really seems to be geranium season. A geranium beckoning over there together with the mock orange. Taking a quick look to the left as we walk along that path to another path which crisscrosses and everything is very billowy down there. Steepa gigantea, campanula and Tetrapanax rex up above looking fabulous and finally growing back its leaves after having been knocked back in winter. And another look down this section as we cross across. And everything has just filled in so much, I guess with the very heavy sun we had early on in the year. And then an excess of rain, it's just so good for plants. They love both of those things. And I always think plants look best in dapple shade. If they're very glary under full sun, then they definitely don't look their best. But a bit of dappled shade can really show things off. Okay, so we have 
gotten to the end of that path and are about to enter the next section of the garden and where I'm standing there is just such a heady scent from the mock orange that is beside me and this particular one is my favourite I just love the scent we have a geranium on the left there and <laughs> It's very funny because this geranium I've had for a very long time and just for fun now what I'm going to do is insert a little video clip I made in uh, two years ago I think which compared this very view of the garden when it was first planted with my original rose garden yes the bit in the sec the section on the right was originally a rose garden comparing that original planting to the garden two years ago. So the geranium on the left is your marker and take a look at this. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna just show you I have a lot of grass down there why do you have so much grass I could put some more plants down there a lot of ligularia in here and then we're up against the mock orange tree which is scenting me so wonderfully at the moment so welcome to the next section of the garden <laughs> where we have geraniums on the left it really is geranium city and we have some saracenia planters just here now I haven't yet planted up that border but it's the next thing on my list of things to do. Maybe I'll divide the irises and put them in there, I'm not sure. The Saracenia have recovered well from their late division this year and they are back and their bouncy meaty old selves again. Any flowers I had I did lose them however but never mind I'll get flowers next year. This starry white flower over on the left is called Galena and it's a welcome addition at this time of the year. So now we're going to travel up this path to the next section of the garden and I guess what beckons me over here is this glorious variegated plant and look how the sun is catching that. So this is the variegated Phytolacca which I featured in its own video last year as part of the My Month of Perennial series and it is looking so gorgeous and we have a dark leafed hydrangea just behind it but I'll tell you what rather than progressing up this way I want to enter from behind here and we can look at these plants from behind so a bit of a change to the normal routine on the garden visits. Let's do that. I love how the morning light lights up this particularly shady area of the garden and just sits there in its dappled wonderfulness beckoning us in. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunny day and that's what we need after all that terrible, terrible rain that just seemed to go on forever. So what we're going to do now is take a little jaunt down this shady path in the garden. Unfortunately my peonies were a casualty of the rain. Now this is peony Sarah Bernhardt which is a beautiful one and um, yeah. <laughs> The flowers have completely bowled with the rain. I just need to get in there and clip off those brown heads. That purple leafed plant there on the right is a hydrangea called hot chocolate I believe. We'll see it from the other side no doubt in a minute and of course the giant echium there on the left. But down below we have a variety of woodland plants, some of which you saw me planting out earlier on in the season. So here we're looking at Sanguinaria mostly, which is the plant in the foreground with the umbrella-like leaves. And we're looking at a scrambling geranium, which tolerates quite a bit of shade and is now going to cover up all those spring things that have gone past their best with a mass of purple flowers. But can you see in there the little gem that I thought I had lost and let me see if I can zoom in. We're looking at its back here. 
and this of course is an arasema but if you don't like arasema you may well like this one because well it's pink and it's very inoffensive looking and lots of people who don't like the dangerous dark dusky look of arasemas absolutely love this one and i love it too so gosh i've had this for many years i thought it was gone but no, there it is, coming up out of the ground. I'm delighted. The white polymonium is looking really quite good at the moment. And when that finishes flowering, I will cut it to the ground because I don't want it seeding around. And look how frothy the melanocelinum is at the moment. <laughs> it's absolutely magnificent. It's lost the edge of its colour and some of the umbels are going to seed. But it is so tall this year. So I guess this plant is about eight foot this year and I guess that is the trick. Plant it a bit in the shade and then it will stretch up to reach the light. Because if I plant it in full sun I only get three or four foot. Okay, let's continue a bit further down here and see where the path takes us. And here we have the flowers of Hosta Empress Wu. We have a fabulous Alstrom area called Verona and we have the species Chrysanthemum with this amazing purple flower. This Chrysanthemum was looking absolutely fabulous just before the rains and now it looks a bit splattered. But okay, I mean, you know, this is the thing with the garden. Everything has its particular season and you can't get too upset if something goes over too quickly or gets spoilt in one particular year, you'll just have to move on, look at something else and wait until next year to see that again. And if we go down here from the Alstrom area, there is a plant I want to show you that I had completely forgotten about, which is this white carnation. Now this is a really old fashioned carnation called Mrs. Sinkin, really good variety that has an amazing scent. Very clovey, very heady, very fantastic when some sun goes on it. I've just gone in there and had a good sniff and it's amazing. So leaving behind this pathway and going past the Knifophia, the red hot poker with that fabulous foliage. It's pretty good, isn't it? That one's nor the eye. We'll just swing around here. <laughs> See that table there? My son had his friend over yesterday and because we're still practicing social distancing he had to sit there to eat his dinner while the rest of us sat over here to eat ours at the main table. <laughs> strange times, strange times. And isn't this here just such a glorious mess? An exuberance of growth, very, very pleased with it. So we have the silver-leafed Artemisia Valerie Fines in the foreground, a Persicaria and a Campanula, and they look great. So this plant does best in really stony, dry soil where it doesn't get a lot of feed and it holds itself up better. In a summer like we've had this year with a lot of rain, it gets too much lush growth and tends to fall over. I have no idea who owns this cat. It's not mine. And I think she's going to just give that ice cream plate a bit of a lick. So I now have the camera up on the stone table and what we're going to do is just do a little pan around so there's where my son's son sat for his dinner last night left his plate out there oh we had the most amazing ice cream my husband made it and he made it from rose petals oh it was gorgeous Trachycarpus fortuni a hardy palm which is looking really good at the moment in there that is my musa basho my basho banana that i am in the process of planting i was in the process of planting it before the rains came so it has stayed there look at it all hopeful that i'll get through with the job today 
and I guess we might need to move down just a little bit further over here to see these plants. So here we have a variety of variegated hostas and Astilboides, which is that plate-like plant there with the very green round leaves, which I absolutely love. This is one of my favorite perennials. And way back in the beginning of this channel, I divided that particular one there and spread it out. And this is the result. And then just moving across, we have a green hosta, which I don't like. That is coming out. So now let's check out the next section over around the greenhouse. I'm very pleased with the way I've set up this arrangement here. So we have the cornice tree in front of a beach hedge, copper beach hedge. And the cream is just beautifully set off by the dark foliage behind. That's what I think. And then just giving you a little sweep around here. So this is the back of that border where the stone table was. Yet another hardy palm, Trachycarpus fortuni. And if I just bring it around here, I don't know, can you see that campanula, that white campanula bobbing out there? And now we are behind the greenhouse where you can see all my plants in waiting which were recently tidied up and this is a big job to do every year. If I haven't got them in the ground then I have to tidy up the plastic and weed it and anyway you probably saw some information about that in my greenhouse video. But what I really want to show you is this border over here. And we have a smattering of hydrangea flowers on the paniculata hydrangea here, which I think this is a little bit early. And this is just a better close up of one of those beautiful flowers, which can attain a really, really giant size. And if we do just go up here, we have a rose. And this is the rambling rector which I planted in the cherry tree, which is behind here. Flowers just once a year, but it's very vigorous and very beautiful when it is in flower. If you look hard on the branches of this tree, you can actually see some cherries, but we never get them. They're far too high up and the rambling rector does a good job with its thorns of keeping us down. So the birds always get them. Up here in this border we have a mishmash of podophyllums and arisema and a couple of weeds that the rain brought up. But let's have a look at those arisema. It's actually hard to see these properly because they hide behind the stalks of their parasols. And if we continue up here you can see that its leaves, they do form the most beautiful parasol over the heads of the plants. And there are lots of them coming. I'm very proud to say that all of these arisema were actually grown from seed by myself. Okay, now I want to show you something very special. Let's see if we can go in closer. And this here is a roscoa that my son Samuel grew from seed many years ago. And if you have read my book, Journal of an Irish Garden, then you know the whole story and he was so delighted when this came up. And there are lots of them coming. Lots and lots. And this is why I'm waging a battle on the verbascum in my garden at the moment. It's because I've grown better ones from seed. These are silver-leafed verbascum. And if you have both green and silver in your garden, then the green is likely to predominate because they're very promiscuous and they crossbreed and the green predominates. So I'm trying to get rid of all of the green and reintroduce the silver and just have lots and lots of silver. So that's a job we're going to have to do soon, planting out these lovely little plants. And now we've passed over behind the house, the tarmac and the house, to the other side of the garden, the other half of the garden. But when I say half, it, it's a smaller half. Is that just an Irish thing? Can you say that? A smaller half. But uh, anyway, okay, so this section here, which we lovingly know as Baby's Hill, for no good reason, <laughs> except that it used to be a hill that the kids loved when they were little. And it is looking good in the sunshine. 
and we have a Buddha in there looking quite regal behind the bench and swinging around we have a section of the garden that my daughter absolutely loves it's her favorite section she goes and sits there no idea why there is nothing there very little there anyway we have the four beech columns in the foreground that were planted last autumn so we had to stake this one because it kept coming down in the winds and it's interesting because the other three were bare root but this was actually bought in a pot and the one in the pot is the one that had to be staked so this here is really the only planting in this section that my daughter loves so much it has the iberus which has been cut back now since you last saw it and a geranium patricia at the end there and again what i said about geraniums yeah <laughs> never the well actually perhaps this is the main focus of this particular border at the moment because there's not much else in flower and a lot of the geraniums have very similar flowers but i really like these kind of magenta purple ones i find I just love the way they kind of call out and grab the attention from afar even if it's only with a couple of dots of colour. And now we're going to go into this section of the garden for just a few moments and I'll tell you what I've been doing here. And now we're going to have a very quick peek over this section of the garden here where I usually have the stone table and as you can see I was working here just before the rain so we have some newly planted plants we've got some camassia bulbs i dug up to put somewhere else and just generally <laughs> an area under construction this has to be my favorite allium of all it's the one called christophii and it gets these really really big balls of flower see see how big <laughs> compared to my hand not they're really enormous ones you see at shows, but this is one, and why I love it really, it's one that comes back in my garden and persists, and we all love that. And Alstroemeria are the most glorious, exotic looking flowers that are completely hardy for me. And my Schefflera is doing really well there on the left. This is the one with the rhododendifolium, rhododendron-like leaves, doing really good in the ground for couple of years now so yeah section of the garden under construction check back later to see how it goes and that brings me to the end of this June garden tour video which I hope you enjoyed on this <laughs> this morning after the monsoon where the garden has really perked up as a result of a lot of rain but gotten splattered as well and of course with a lot of rain it just doesn't make just plants grow it makes the weeds grow as well but that's all in the circle of life isn't it okay thank you for watching and see you on the next video bye